When modeling data in SwiftUI, using the environment actually makes our lives a lot easier. And today, we're going to look at how we can use the new environment property wrapper in the observation framework within this free course here on my channel. And also as well, if you're interested, feel free to check out the rest of this course and the source code down below. Now, there's one thing that I like, trust me, it's options. We're going to see how we can build this theme manager using the environment where we can select different themes as well as discussing some of the do's and don'ts you 100% want to follow to keep your life stress-free. <laughs> Let's get this water. So if you look at our project here, and like I said before, in the previous videos in this course, you can access all the source code by clicking on the link down below that links to my Gumroad page. And if you just look at what we have here, it's just simply a screen that shows us and we can select different themes. But right now, when we select a theme, nothing is actually updating behind the scenes. So it's not actually hooked up to anything. And also actually help us do this because there are two different views. We need to use the environment. In the old way of SwiftUI, we actually did use the environment. And I do have videos. I have a course actually that covers SwiftUI data flow if you want to see how to use the environment object. But the best way to think about the environment in SwiftUI as a concept is think of it like a balloon. Once you let a balloon go into the sky, pretty much anyone can either see or access it. And that's the best way to look at it with your SwiftUI apps. If you need to pass some kind of data or state across all the screens in your app, you probably want to use the environment. By doing this, in your parent or your child views can access that state or data that you may need to use to you know, configure some UI on the screen. So we've covered the meaty part of what the environment is, when you want to use it and whatnot. Now we need to actually get stuck into the code. In the next chapter of these videos, we're going to go over using the environment in the observation framework, as well as some do's and don'ts that you definitely want to avoid. Now, if you're enjoying this video, I really appreciate it if you left a comment down below to let me know what it is you're enjoying. And as well, if you are enjoying it, to share with other people, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to get updates for whenever I release a brand new video. And like I mentioned before, if you want to access any of this source code, you can actually do that in the link down below in the description box as well. Now we're going to need some kind of like manager to help us hold, you know, this state within our app so we can pass the state across different screens. So I'm going to create a new file to hold us this state. And we actually cover this in my video in this course that goes over the intro to the observation framework and also migrating as well to the observation framework. So in our theme switcher view, I'm going to create a brand new class. And it's just going to be called theme manager like so. And we'll want to import the observation framework as well. And then use the at observable macro. All right, cool. So within this class, it's going to be pretty lightweight because all it needs to hold is the selected theme. So we'll create a property called var selected theme. And its type is going to be color, which is a Swift UI type. And we'll just give it a default now as red because it's one of the colors in our array. All right, cool. I want this to be a global object that's actually passed across different views. So in our main app entry point, we need to create an instance of this theme manager. So within here, we'll say app state private var, and then this will be theme manager. And in order to actually pass this down from the parent to all of the child views, we need to use the environment modifier. So we'll say dot environment, and then we'll just say here theme manager like so. Now, if I was to use this feed manager in my views, it will actually crash because we've not added it to our previews. So we'll get onto that in a second. Now, in order to get onto, in order to do that, back in our switcher view, you'll see here that we actually store the selected color that someone has. To make it small, we actually store the selected color in a state property here. Now, rather than this being a state property that's local to this view, we now want this to actually use the theme manager that we set up, which is our global source of truth now. So we just need to use the at environment property wrapper here, and we'll just access our theme manager dot self like so, and we'll say private var theme manager. And then the type will be theme manager like this. Okay, cool. Now this should crash like I said before, because we're not injecting it into the environment. So in our previews, we need to inject it into the environment and we'll say theme manager and it should be fine now. Cool. 
So we're gonna get some errors down here, and that's because we've now not really got a you know selective theme no more. We delete that state property. So instead, this should actually be theme manager dot selected theme. And then we also want to replace this as well with our global state like so. Okay, cool. And if we build it, we now don't get any errors, which is what we want to see. So back in our content view, we still need to use this environment as well, because if you look at our content view here, when we actually fix it, <laughs> we do have a rectangle here with a background, which has a gradient for our theme as well. So we're going to want to use our environment again and inject this into our preview so we can see it. So I'll just add that in and then down below, we'll say dot environment and then we'll just add in our theme manager like so. So now we can see that on the screen. So our rectangle here, rather than it being hard coded to blue, we want this to use the property in our theme manager. So we're just going to say here theme manager dot selected theme and it should now select show the gradient for that color that was selected so let's just select a theme and you can see here now that when i'm selecting themes it's actually changing color to what it is that i have selected so this is pretty nice and something that you can actually put within your applications as well now i want to make it look a bit nicer so we should actually animate it so in order to animate it, it's pretty straightforward all i need to do is on the Z stack, just use the animation modifier and just check for basically specify the animation. We'll say bouncy. And then the value that we're going to listen to is our selected theme within our theme manager. So we're just gonna say theme manager dot selected theme. Now what should happen is I should get a nice animation now, as you can see when I'm switching between these colors. So this is looking pretty nice. So like I said, this code is all on Gumroad and this is a starter, basically. Think of it like a template for your apps. You can actually add on top of it, build on top of it and do whatever you want. In the next video, we're going to look into comparing binding and bindable and when to use both and you know the do's and don'ts and whatnot. So make sure you click on the video on this side of the screen here to carry on with the playlist and check out this video. So let's get it.